What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. All right. So uh, on my channel, of course, we talk about the greatness of Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Phil Jackson, and the Chicago Bulls. Uh, but one thing I've always tried to push on this channel and promote on this channel is the greatness of Dennis Rodman. Now, I understand today's NBA fans, they have been conditioned to appreciate offense, three-point shooting. But Dennis Rodman was so vitally important to the success of those Chicago Bulls. He, he was the key. He was the key. And Phil Jackson said so uh, some years ago. Uh, this is an interview that Phil Jackson did uh, some time ago. I think it was back in 2011. And I think this was around the time, or maybe a little bit, no, I think I think Dennis was inducted in, what, 2012? He was inducted into the Hall of Fame. So this might have been when it was announced that Dennis was going to the Hall of Fame. In an interview, Phil talked about the importance of Dennis Robin and how Michael Jordan referred to Dennis Robin as the MVP of the team. He said, quote, the season we got Dennis, we recorded the best record in NBA history. It tells you a lot about his impact. The year Pippen set out the first three months after an operation, Michael told me he felt Dennis was the MVP of that team. The Bulls were coming off a second round exit at the hands of the Orlando Magic in the 1995 playoffs and added Robin that summer after he had a disastrous stint in San Antonio. Now, he put up great numbers, uh, but he just was a terrible fit for the San Antonio Spurs. Um, at times, he was disinterested in play, uh, you know, especially his defense. It was up and down. Um but that acquisition transformed the Chicago Bulls. And he was the key that they needed. He was the key piece because Horace Grant unceremoniously left the team. He had agreed to stay with the Chicago Bulls. He had given a, a apparently, reportedly, a handshake guarantee that he was going to stay with the Chicago Bulls. And he had agreed to uh, a new contract. But ultimately... He reneged on that and left and went to Orlando. And um, the Bulls really missed Horace Grant. They missed that interior presence. They missed that interior defensive physical presence, that, that you know, rebounding, playing defense. Uh, they missed that. And that was their biggest weakness. And that's why they lost, primarily why they lost that series. Uh, they were too soft in the, mirror, in the, uh, in the middle and... If you look at that 1995 series, the Magic dominated the Chicago Bulls as far as rebounding. Dennis changed all that. Dennis was the medicine that they needed. And that's partially why uh, the very next year in the conference finals, the Bulls swept the Magic four games to none. And... Dennis Rodman did something that Luke Longley and Bill Winnington couldn't do, and that is effectively guard Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, Dennis Rodman was a workhorse when it came to his physical uh, ability, like as far as his conditioning. He could play a full 48 minutes and not get tired, even at that advanced age in his career, in his late 30s. Um, Luke Longley, Bill Winnington, these guys would wear down. Playing, you know, having to try to guard a guy like Shaq, and this is what he referred to. He said he couldn't take those big guys like Shaq leaning on him for 48 minutes. Now he's talking about Luke Longley. We had Luke take some physical pressure away, but at the end, in crucial times, Dennis would play Shaq, giving up 70 pounds. Actually, uh, he was giving up more than that. Uh, he was giving up probably more around 100 pounds. Because at that time, I think Shaq was about 3.30. And Dennis was about 2.30. He was a guy who could play 48 minutes without a breath. As the game went on, he got stronger. 
he'd be stronger at the end than he was at the beginning. I think this is a clip of Dennis Rodman in the 1996 NBA Finals, where, in my opinion, Dennis Rodman was responsible for two of their four victories. The only losses to Detroit in 1990, the Knicks in 94, and the Magic last season. In the Eastern Conference Finals, Chicago came out in the second game against Orlando after winning handily in the first one. Very flat, Luke Longley and Rodman getting into foul trouble. It's important for Chicago to get off to a good start with pressure defense and try to hold serve. For Seattle, it's all about confidence. It's about Peyton controlling the tempo. Too many fakes by Longley that time. Peyton for three. remember correctly, I think two times in that series, he tied the NBA record for most offensive rebounds in a, in a finals game, 11. Elvin Hayes, he did it twice in that series. He was completely dominating that Seattle Sonics front court when it came to, uh, when it came to rebounding, especially on the offensive end. Since uh, Sean Kemp on the board. Mark Rodman has found his rebounding rhythm. In the first game and a half, he was jumping three times for every rebound. He eventually got his two goals by the way. Dennis Rodman, a quiet first half. And uh, in the third quarter, eight points, eight rebounds, seven on the offensive board. So he has nine offensive rebounds, the most offensive rebounds in an NBA Finals game. Elvin Hayes with 11. Washington at Seattle back in 79. The human eraser, Marvin Webster. Marvin Webster, most of the world. It's out of peace. I know the eraser is always one of your favorites. Absolutely. Perkins. Air ball. Rodman with the rebound. Rodman Got to come out and play the way Isaiah Thomas used to play on the Detroit Pistons. Come down the lane, put up big, big offensive numbers, draw the defense to you, and then set up your team. And Sean playing by himself out here tonight. Call for yet another turnover. Ron Hoffer 
Hopper. The Bulls have missed their last six shots. At one point, they led by 13. They were up 80 to 67 with nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Down to 35 seconds, 10 on the shot clock. Bulls in no hurry here. Six on the 24, and Curry fires the three. Yeah, I just had to look at that, man. Bring back a little man, some memories, man. I just didn't think, you know, this rebounding and playing defense is not glamorous. It doesn't get the highlight reels. They don't, you know, it doesn't get the highlight reels that offensive plays do on ESPN or social media. But the era that I grew up in, it was a defensive era. So it was very vitally important. I think that's what is, is missing from today's fans because defense is missing. So they're thinking, well, it's not that important. But if you look at the NBA championship teams, there's never been a bad defensive team that's won championship. Even the Denver Nuggets, who were last year sort of middle of the pack defensively, 15th, I think, in defensive rating, in the playoffs they were like top two or three in the NBA and defensive rating. So to win a championship, you have to play defense. You, you can't get around it. That's why Dane Lillard has been a loser. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be mean, but he's been a loser for most of his career. You cannot win a championship and not play defense. It, it's just not going to happen. And Dennis Rodman was critical. And I thought that Dennis Rodman should have won, at the very least, co-finals MVP with Michael Jordan, if not outright finals MVP, because I think that his rebounding and defense and interior uh, play won at least two of those four games for the Chicago Bulls. And he was also very important when Pippen was pulling that stunt in 97-98. He was very important to success. That's why without Pippen, I think the Bulls were, what, 27-11? and But people say that Jordan couldn't win without Pippen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was Jordan, Kukoc, and Rodman leading the squad to a 27-11 record. Uh, but anyway, that's all I got to say about this moment. Tell me what you guys think.